one of our biggest shortcomings is our unconscious bias. You know, 95% in the video, it said 90% of decision makings, but it's 95% uh, is unconscious uh, and 5%, only 5% works consciously. And um, it also mentioned that we start to assume because we, we work on this autopilot, right? We start to assume things about people we just heard. And because it takes time to convince a new group of people that your space is now also for them. Because for a long time, uh, I didn't think theaters were for me. If I'm being very honest, I thought, oh, this is for th those type of people. It's only for, but it, it takes some time to convince me to come to your theater.
and also you know the, the, the fact that we have a changing demography um, will force any organization whether it's public or private to really take that change into consideration to if they want to stay relevant if they want to have a public if they want to sell tickets then they have to take into consideration that the public is uh, changing and that it's uh, diverse and that um, and that they have narratives that they want to be seen represented and if that is not if, if that's not not happening then the, those organizations have a problem one of the last points that i was making about challenging um bias and stereotyping is um, considering what evidence that you have that proves that that's taking place. Because no production company is going to admit that its output is based on stereotyping and bias. Um, because most production companies will assume we are ethical, we are moral, uh, we work to high standards. So a, a key question I think for everyone here is how do you make material how do you evidence that bias and stereotyping exists across the live performance sector it's also about looking at the production process in its entirety and it, so it is about commissioning who decides what gets produced because at that point ideas of bias and stereotyping get introduced and they become um, embedded within a production at the stage of writing. So taking the production process apart is fundamentally important and identifying what key stage you're going to address. So this is your play. These are all the characters starting top left. This is your leading character. And so you have a, a, a play with, um, how many is it? Uh, 16. 16 roles. First, uh, oh, sorry, you have a group of three who are involved in this production in different departments. They are given the task of doing Neropa. And first, on their own, they mark the characters, how they are written. Uh, these are the men, these are the women. This is how it is written, by their names, by their pronouns. And in the next step, they determine, that's supposed to be green, they determine the neutral roles, the roles that don't have to be male. So at the moment, it's people using it voluntarily. And there have also been some, I would say, big film people in Germany who also work with the method. But the next step should be that it should be made mandatory because it can be a very positive, positive, popular thing because it's so easy to do. It doesn't cost a lot of money. It doesn't take a lot of time. And it makes, uh, it makes change. And at the moment, this is what all the talk is about, but not the action. 